Okay, everyone, good morning on this going to be, I think, beautiful day. Cheers to you with my coffee today. <clears throat> so bear with me. <clears throat> Early morning uh, recording, I'm pleased to do with my friend Chrissy McRoberts, which is super exciting because I haven't seen her in ages and so much stuff going on. You know, we're talking about taking control right now. So many things going on in the world that we can't control. Can't get caught up in that. We got to get caught in what we can control. And um, I'm passionate about so many things. And one of the things that I've been passionate about for a long time is supporting local and not supporting uh, the big corporations as much as possible. And it's interesting with everything that's going on right now because everybody's getting pushed that way. So it seems like the big corporations are the ones that are making a lot of money in all this. And I'm not going down a big rabbit trail. I'm just saying <laughs> it is what it is, right? <clears throat> so I've been working on this multi-part series. I think as it stands right now, there's six parts to it where we're talking about all the different things that we can control. So um, I want to really make sure that we take some special time to talk about local businesses and how important it is that we support them. So I should probably say my name is Michelle Dion. So thank you for joining me for this. And I'd love to introduce uh, my friend who owns Dog Eat Dog Bakery, Chrissy McRoberts. Chrissy, thank you for joining me this morning. Good morning, Michelle. Great day it's going to be, right? Oh, it's so beautiful I, out there. And about time. We deserve it. I can't imagine going through this in the thick of winter. I... I think Mother Earth is pissed, and this is where we're going. She's cleaning herself up, and it'll be fresh and a better, a better way to look at things if we can just keep our minds about us and go through the process, right? Exactly right. Exactly right. I feel like there's a lot of positives that are going to come out of this. Oh, absolutely. You the know? Earth is better. I mean, look, what, look how much it has come in, what, five weeks? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Less less emissions out there. I mean, now you can go out and you can actually just breathe instead of smelling everything, right? We can actually smell the flowers. Somebody mowed their lawn down the block yesterday and it smelled wonderful. I'm like six houses away and I could smell it. And it was like, wow, that's great. Wow. And the wildlife, right? You see all the videos of them coming into places they haven't been in for years, feeling like they're getting their planet back. It's amazing. Yep. So before we get too much into it, Let's talk about you for a minute. I can't imagine anybody in Sarnia doesn't know who you are, but just for shits and giggles, let's pretend they don't. Let's talk <laughs> about you for a minute. Uh, so my name is Chrissy McRoberts. I have owned Dog Eat Dog Bakery, which in the last year, May 1st is our one year anniversary, I transitioned into Dog Eat Dog, and we're in the heart of Mitten Village here in Sarnia. Uh, it's a beautiful store with rustic industrial furniture and decor and a sense of humor. And I just recently took on a business partner who is amazing, um, Ruth Ann Ramsey. And it's working for us, right? We are polar opposites, but we come together to share that drive and the humor. And we care about the community. So the whole business is focused on supporting the community that supports us. We have 22 artisans in the store currently. So I take that personal. I have 21 families that I'm responsible to bring business in to make sure that they have the money. That's my job. And so there is no do or die. It's only do, right? Every time something comes up, you transition. If your rent went up or you had a high bill or something happens, you deal with it, right? just as COVID-19. It's not the end of the world. It's just another hump we have to get over. And it, life will continue. It's not going to be the same as it was. And I don't want it to be the same as it was. This is where we've got that clean slate, right? We've all got that chance. Everything's being cleaned out. And now's the time. Instead of worrying about, oh, your business does this, or she's a shopaholic, or you're, no, let's all just what's important right now. And we're being given this amazing opportunity. We can't blow it. I can't sit at home in my pajamas and think my business is going to come out of this. Okay. 
I have to say, well, how are we just going to bend and twist to get around this? And it's not necessarily just to make money, but there are people out there that are they shopping because they feel kind of bummed and they're stuck at home? Sure. Did they have plans to do stuff and they just didn't do it before, but now they have all the time in the world? Absolutely. So why not participate in that? And we have always looked after the community with fundraising, Humane Society, Into the Good Shepherd, uh, CCMF. We're out there and we're trying to do what we can for them. And amazingly enough, as soon as this started, all of those uh, groups that we help, actually employees started ordering from us. They were the very first ones. And, and it's it, especially the Humane Society. They've been amazing. The orders are coming in. Every week they're ordering something and they don't have to, but you know what? That tells me how much they appreciate what we do. And it's a partnership. It's not you're doing for me. It, it's a friendship and a partnership. And that's the beginning of businesses working together to build something better. And really by definition, that is community. It really is, isn't it? Absolutely. If you make more money than me, maybe it's depending on what you're selling, right? There's a greater need for some things. But let's all work together. I mean, Sarnia is utopia. We have fresh water. We have rivers. We're off a lake. We have dual bridges. We're on an international border. We're artistic. We're creative. We have all these different people collected in one spot with these amazing businesses. And nobody wants anybody else to do better. I just can't imagine their strength in numbers. I, I have a military past you only move as fast as your slowest man right. you have to drop back pick them up and move forward because there's strength in numbers and we can drive people from out of town to come into town i mean you can only make so much money with the people in town unless you start fighting right and and competition and getting uglier trash and somebody else why not worry about bringing other people from outside and bringing their dollars to our city and then, right, people may move here, all of that may, everything will grow. You just got to check your ego at the door and just say, you know what? Doesn't matter if I like you, doesn't matter if I don't really care for your business or I wouldn't shop with you, but you're a coworker, really, and I'm going to do whatever I can to support you. And I defer business all the time and people think I'm nuts, but you know what? It comes back to me. Well, that's it, exactly. And we're always better together. You know, we work so hard in this community to to uh, um, focus on tourism we need people to to have even if people are coming for events what are they doing between the events what do they want to bring home you know whenever i went away for a weekend i always brought home something for whoever babysat my kids you know what i mean you brought home things um that for for souvenirs that reflect on the memories and the other thing that is really important is that we are remembering this really affects like your kind of business, I think, is that life is still going on. I have two baby showers that I'm gonna be dropping off gifts at their door. You know, I'm gonna need things. We still have, I book DJs for Playfair Music. I'm moving dates like crazy. So people are being um, uh, inventive and creative with their ideas. They're doing different draws, different. So we still need more than ever to have that human, um element where we can give the gifts we can be creative we can reach out to you and be like you know my buddy's really depressed do you have a special mug i can pick up do you have a pillow do you have a a whatever you know we need those special things more than ever i can't imagine um if we were closed down to the point that we didn't have access to anything except for groceries yeah i think this is forcing us to look local and here's, uh, here's the bottom line. If we can all support each other for businesses and we can get our pricing right so that it reflects the community and they can all shop with us and we have personal relationships with them and they trust us and I know where to send you. And I mean, it's good to have two or three or four of a certain item. Because you may prefer one style over another as long as we're not copying each other. But to build all that, our community can be self-sufficient. And, and I, I've had this 
discussion, right? Confrontation is just a difference of an ideas. It's not fighting. The big store, the conglomerates, when people say, but they're employing our local people. Okay. But if all the local businesses support each other and we start to grow, we can hire on more people and we can employ our own. The bottom line is if you really, really need an item and I can make it for you and this is how much it costs, you go home with it, say you can do two or three different things, or you can say, but I can buy 10 things at Walmart. Okay, 10 things that you probably aren't gonna use eight of them, but you only bought it because it's cheap, but guess what, it's crap. You're gonna go buy a prefabbed coffee table or say an end table. And in two years, it's wobbly and it's shitty. And you're going to come and either throw it in the garbage and I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to flip it, tighten it up, fix it and resell it. Or you could have just bought from someone like me in the first place and paid almost the exact same or a little less and had a quality product. I just don't get what the draw is that you can, I get it's a one-stop shop, but it's that human thing you're talking about. Come into the store and talk to me. You can see the bulldogs. You can visit. You can look at other stuff, things you didn't even know existed. You may not buy it, but if I can put the idea in your mind when you leave here and someone says, oh, you know what? I could really go for a piece of glass for my garden. Hey, you know where I saw one? And then the word starts to go. And then I have customers that I buy birthday cards for, or you know what I remember when their anniversary was, or at least I remember their dog's names. If you see them down the street, if I know you, I'm waving. That's up to you to wave back, but I mean, woo, hi, I'm driving somewhere and I'm honking the horn. People honk their horn at me all the time down the road. That's the community I wanna live in, not the, oh, is she looking at me? Should I reply? I don't wanna seem uncool. I don't care, I'm uncool all the time. <laughs> I'm the poster child of uncool. <laughs> exactly. I'm the one that talks in the grocery line to everybody. <laughs> what are you going to do? I don't and know. You know what? But this is, I think, a, a, again, another bonus that's coming out of this. Because people are realizing that we should have been sourcing our stuff in Canada. You know, there's such a big, a big impact when you start thinking about manufacturing and sourcing and, and all that stuff. And, you know, when it comes to Walmart, um, like, I don't know how you can look at just this city for an example and not see how, like, we used to have a Kmart, we used to have a Zellers. They've slowly pushed all those other businesses out. So if that doesn't pull on your heartstrings, I don't know what does. And so, you know, when this all started happening and we started closing down, that was my very first thought is, oh my gosh, we can't squeeze out more businesses. So many have been squeezed out over the last 20 years. We just and it's interesting because we were just starting to shift that way, weren't we? Right yep. before this happened. And more people were like, I can't tell you how many people I know who were like, if I never walk in Walmart again, I could care less. More people going to the market, more people shopping downtown, Mitten Village, the little you know areas where places are popping up, places are cleaning up, you know, making a big difference. And then this happens and then it, out of fear, and all that other stuff, then people all got corralled back to the big stores again. So, you know, it's interesting because a lot of you have, and this is what you're doing, right? You can pre-order and pick up at the door. Is that mm -hmm. right? Or so, in delivery, all delivered to your door. Oh, very good. So, you know, this new way of thinking, even if you think, okay, so maybe it's five bucks more to go to you for something, for an example, how many trips are you saving that you're not going through Tim Hortons right now? How many yep. other things are you not doing? Like I've been trying to live a minimalist lifestyle for at least the last two or three years. So because I'm saving money on those crappy shopping trips, I, can, I don't feel guilty or, or anything about spending a little bit more money on something that I really do want. It's really going to do something for me, even if it's just emotionally, even if it's just, if it's just like that... that um, uh, be the good you want to see in the world that you made for me years ago. Remember? Yep. Still on my fireplace. That makes me feel good. That starts a conversation. That makes other people. So that is like an, an amazing thing that I don't even think about the money part because I think about that emotional value. So I think as maybe we're changing a little bit and realizing that our focus, you know, like you say, 
buying on sale just for the fact that it's on sale. That's an issue. That's not Absolutely. ever going to be a good thing. So mm -hmm. I hope, you know, we're reevaluating our relationships. We're reevaluating how important it's been, you know, like I, I think about like your average person's life, like me, for example, you know, I, I got up, I went to school, I, I followed through, I had my kids. At one point I was working three jobs, you know, we get so busy. We're running our program all the time. And so now that we're, most of us for the most part are forced to stop <laughs> and reevaluate, it's a great time to say, hey, maybe I wanna start trying my own thing. Maybe I want to turn into one of those people that sell through your store, get into some crafts, get into some stuff. And again, this is where the relationships are, because I certainly couldn't talk to somebody at Walmart about that, could I? No. Oh, God, no. How about I want to buy this, but I want it a different color. Do you think an employee is going to say, but you know what? You can go out and do this and this. I have customers call me on the phone. I have my grandma's antique hutch can you do something with it? And I'll say, well, let's see the pictures. And if they show me, no, because we'll take the value away. We want to do something to it, but it's worth so much. It's in pristine condition, right? That's information nobody else will share. Or you know what? Save yourself a few bucks. I'll give you step-by-step step how to do it if it's not, right? If you're just looking for a job to be done, I'll tell you how to do it yourself. But I know the next time you really need something that you can't handle, you're coming to the girl that helped you out the first time. Like, I'm here to help. I mean, I still want to make money, but let's be honest. If you have to whip out your credit card every time you need something because you don't have the funds, I don't need to have that weighing on my heart. I can tell you how to do it. And maybe one day you'll return the favor or spread the word about me helping you out. That is that's the good. I can sleep at night. I feel proud about my business. And what I need now is all the other businesses in town to get on board with this. It, we all know how to look after ourselves and we all know how to run our businesses. We've proven that. But unless you walk in every day and go, Whoo, I've made it. I love everything about it. I'm making exactly the amount of money I want to make and it can't get any better. Then, then you need to make change and the earth is telling you it's time to make the change. So I don't care if you're a top selling real estate agent or you have a business that your family's owned for five generations and you're rolling in it, or you are like the general manager of Imperial Oil. It does not matter. We're all human beings and there's something that can come from speaking to each other. And I would hope that every relationship or conversation I've had with somebody, they've walked away from something going, Oh yeah, she just started talking away and you know what? She's got a pretty cool place and, and I'll walk away going, they're just a regular person. Like you can talk to them, you can deal. What I can't deal with is somebody that thinks they're the best in the pack. That doesn't account for anything. I mean, if you are the best, if you are the best at what you do, you don't know it because all you're ever looking at is being better than you are today, tomorrow. So you never even recognize that you're the leader. You just got to keep going, but I'll be damned if I'm going to sit back and just let us all fall back into the same trap again next time. The I'm better than you, or I don't, what could I possibly learn from you? Guess what? You could learn what not to do or what to do. Or if I walk into a place where there are other business owners that are mature, they've been in their business for some time. And I walk in that room as a new business person, and not one of you introduced yourselves to me. What does that say about who you are as a professional? That you only kiss the butts of the people that come spend money with you? Honestly, do you not think you'd want to talk to me and hope there's one more person that will refer people to you? Like, it's business 101. And if you think you're the top dog and you don't even know that basic fundamental, we have a problem. And I'm open-minded all the time. I'll go to slap. I'll go anywhere. I'll go anywhere. Anybody that's going to give me information for free. I mean, I'll pay for it too, but let's start with free. Then I'm going to share to everybody I went to and go, Hey, go to the cube at Lampkin college. Go to this, go to that, go learn about this. Are you having problems with Instagram? Or if you just want that human connection, 
there's a million groups out there, right? Save Sarnia or Sarnia surviving COVID-19. Like, there's a million places to go to just get that positive interaction and just say, wow, we can really just let it all go and change. And change is great. It's great. It's Absolutely. great for us. We've been booming. I mean, we've made great decisions. Are there some I would have changed? Probably. But I mean, so far, we're just with community in mind, we're moving forward and it's coming to us tenfold. And that's the right decision for us to make right now. And for the businesses that are sitting at home saying, I'm just going to wait it out. I've got my emergency funds coming in. I'm just going to wait it out. Well, every day there's a business that's putting up a post saying, sorry, guys, can't do it. I'm done. And I'm like, don't fold if you just talk to somebody, right? You wouldn't have to close or maybe you would. But if you sit dormant, when this all clears up, people are going to be like, wow, I never heard from them. Are they closed? That's you exactly right. That Holy yeah, cow. Exactly. You want to make sure you're still in their mind. And the reality is, we don't know how long this is going to be going on for. You know, they might stagger the reopenings. You just... Again, things that we can't control. So you're right. So taking your power back means making these decisions. So you're what? So you're doing delivery, and um, people can pick up. So I saw that you have a website that they order from. So are all your vendors on there? Uh, yes, we have the Square system that we work with, and Square just happens to offer free online store i mean so many gigs so we have enough to upload everything it's not fancy we'll eventually get to fancy but right now it uploaded all of our uh standing inventory but we had to add photos and dimensions and different pricing and we're doing the very best we can not everything's there but people are suddenly at home and they're taking notice because before i guess it was a lot of energy to get your car and drive somewhere we have tons of parking but um now they're taking time to really look at the products or look at who made it or understand that we cover everything. I mean, yeah, there's some language in the store, but we do it in a sense of humor kind of way. But it just is one of those places that you'll never be in another store exactly like this ever. I'd like you to revolt the sunny, shiny, beautiful day comment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's uh, really crappy out there now. What the hell just happened? I think it's snow. It is ah, snow. I'm going to be in denial. I'm not even going to look there. So now that you're doing stuff online, first of all, will you continue after you do open your doors properly to do Absolutely, things online? Absolutely, because I get that people want to order online. Let me just point this out. Where are the Walmarts and the Wayfairs and all these expensive places and places you can order online that's shipping from China? Where are they for your deliveries right now? You're waiting a month or six weeks to get something. If you want something from a local business, if they deliver, they'll have it on your door in 24 to 48 hours. We're here. We're doing it right now. Do you, if you have an issue with your product, we're right here right now. You're picking up the phone and you're talking to the person that did it. We can handle this right now as opposed to right? Where's the company that you ordered something, you tried it on, you didn't like it, and they're not taking it back, or you had to pay to ship it back, or you have to wait. Like, we're talking about the real things that matter, and that's the relationships. And if we get all the business, pricing will come down a bit, right? Because then we can pay our bills because we have the influx of money. We can look after things. We can offer you different things now. Local businesses have got to get that right. I mean, you can't gouge the people that are here supporting you. You can't. But I get we all have to make money. But if, if we just get it right in our heads, right, the whole community is one, have got to be about this. And the people that their pages, and I don't want to go negative, but people that just say they don't like it here, comments about starting it, well, guess what? Nobody's asking you to stay. Exactly. So exit stage left, babe. This is utopia. And if you can't open your eyes and recognize that, the only reason, I think you've said a million times, you can control your response and you can control how you see things. 
And if you see it being negative, that's your whole life, babe. There is no positive part about you. So shh, shh. Exactly. <laughs> And, and you're going to take that negative dark cloud to the next town and you're going to hate it too. Because it's not Absolutely. about the town. It's something you got going on on the inside. Right? Yep. Winning the lottery isn't going to help that person. Like, no. That's no, not at all. If they win, they should just donate that money to you and I. <laughs> <laughs> For the humane society and the end of the good shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, right. Because yeah. it's just going to be a storm of bad decisions, obviously. Yeah. So... Yeah. Um, so just curious, so now that you're doing stuff online, does that give you the ability to ship your stuff farther? We have been, we've shipped a few things, but the downfall right now is the wait time to get it into the States, the wait okay. time to get it into and through customs, right? Because everything has to sit. We feel bad saying to somebody, here's what you're going to pay and that's great, but who knows how long the customs in your country is going to hold it. It could be two weeks, it could be a month, and I can't guarantee that. We feel really bad. We have shipped a few things. But um, you could Canada-wide. What about just Canada-wide? Oh, absolutely. And we go through a uh, delivery um, carrier through Costco has members, and they have different things for members to order and go through. And there's a shipping company that is amazing for pricing. And I'm not saying Canada Post can beat some of the prices, but this other company can only in Canada. Whichever rates we have, uh, I'm very lucky that my partner is a shipping receiving manager and she's a guru at what she does. That's her forte. So keeping charge of our inventory and the next step on our online will be being able to say ship it here and having a price like that come up and say, if you want it shipped, here's the dating. We just don't have that right now because there's really not a need. But otherwise I will go and deliver anywhere as far as I guess I could go to Sombra or, you know, Courtright, Cam Lackey, uh, Bright's Grove, Point Edward. I, we charge a little fee to do it because I'm out and I'm kind of putting myself at risk. But the bonus is you don't have to be at risk leaving your home to go do something. So it's kind of a win-win there. But yeah, eventually we will be shipping everywhere. And that means that our artisans have got to pick up pick up the slack and really start pumping it out. And it is something we didn't think we'd be thrown into, but it's amazing. The, the response is amazing. And these are where we can pick the positives out, right? I mean, yeah. I'm sure your relationships with your vendors, you've gone through the trials and tribulations there. So that's awesome. And your customers, um, do you do like mailing lists or like, how do you, how do you reach out to them? Is it all through Facebook? I see you do videos and stuff. I support videos. That's a great way to get the word out. <laughs> uh, Facebook, Instagram, my mouth. I mean, I'm out there all the time. I've got a card on me. I wear my logo shirts. Uh, it, it just is, my partner is a little more shy. Um, I'm obviously the one that wants to get out and be in your face because that's the only way to do it. And with the humor, it's not too often I'm very serious. But I honestly think the written word People only take 10% of that. They don't want one more e email. They don't want to read one more post, but they'll certainly sit back. And if I can put a little humor wrapped around a serious subject, they're going to get it. And the last post about begging small businesses to start to come together and go back, I think it had six and a half thousand views. So, and it was shared, like, I don't even know how many times. And it reached us. As far as Kentucky, I had a lady commenting saying, I own a business. I think this is great. And it's like, this is what it's all about. Everybody. I was just begging for local, but it really did make the difference. So I have to, I've got a few more videos that are already lined up and hopefully that will, uh, the, the humor will get people to get it, break the ice, let it go. It, I don't care what business you own or who you are in this city, whether it's government or business owner or a stay at home or somebody that just works part time or you have a great job at the plants. I don't care. I'll talk to anybody about any subject and I'll just be as honest as I can with you. And I hope that that it just is easier to do that than, than to be fake. That's it right. really is hard. It's hard to go into a store and have somebody go, Oh, hi, thank you for your purchase. We appreciate your business. And then you see me five minutes later at a coffee house 
and you won't even make eye contact with me. Like we've got to stop thinking we're better than other people. And this is this COVID-19 doesn't care what you do, how you do it, how much money you've got. It has cleared the playing field. We're all the same. And if we can just move forward from that, Stop sitting thinking you're better. It doesn't make you any more money. Being aloof does not make you more important. What's wrong with messaging me and going, you know what, this is who I am. Just wanted to touch base. Like when this is all done or if you want to FaceTime or whatever, let's talk because we can always learn something from each other. But at the very bottom, there's another referral and another contact. And I've got a million people. If people ask me for incense or anything, I'm sending them to you. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And this is the whole circle of, of how it works, how we need to, to build up together. And I mean, if you go and you look at the tourism, nobody's going to come to Sarnia just to go to one store. I mean, I suppose they would, but you know what I mean? We need the collective variety, exactly like you say. And we're so lucky that we have these little areas that building them up together is definitely the way to go. So can you just tell me a little bit about some of the vendors that are in there? Like what kind of stuff you're offering? So I'll have to look around because I know I'll forget nope, something. That's okay. <laughs> I have two welders there in the store. Um, one does it actually right now for a living. Uh, one creates these recycled car parts. So they're amazing. Like really, really cool. If you're looking for a piece of art that just happens to be a functioning light, that's what we're looking at. The second one uses all brand new metal, but is more in a uh, new, clean kind of feel about it. So that's the contrast, right? One's the recycled, which is dear to my heart. And then the other one's the new and really cool and different. Uh, I have six woodworkers that are in here and we all have a different, we could have hutch day and all of us make a hutch and bring it in and not one of them are going to have anything to do with each other because when my customers come in, if they only have one choice, I've lost a customer if they don't like it. That's ridiculous. Plus, we all, everybody in the store will accept a custom order. So most stores, you walk in and say, when are you getting more of these? And oh, I don't know. I'll have to call the artisan and check with them and da, da, da. I'm like, well, I'll call them right now. Do you like that color? Because they could possibly make you a different color. I'll put you two in contact. And they build a relationship and it goes outside of the store and that that's my success. If you as an artisan are successful, I will be. So one of the um, businesses that make the wood, Simply Harvest Creations, they're out of Petrolia. They're also both artists and they paint. So I got the win-win out of having art on the walls, but their furniture is massive and beautiful and professional and they can change their styles like just like that. I have a gentleman that makes mantles by hand, they're hollow, but he actually uses wood to make them, but he carves in the wee nooks and the cracks and it looks like they're beams out of a barn, but he can custom stain different sizes. He makes floating shelves, uh, photo stands. He does all kinds of cool stuff. We have a girl with an eye, um, creatives is her pillows line. She also does the shirts with Valley Girl written on them and those are really cool. The pillows are the fun. <clears throat> There's some language on them. There's some really cool ones. Do better. That's a fam that's a really good quote. Do better. Uh, looking around. So we have someone that has all of the beautiful soaps and the bath bombs and the creams and the scrubs. And she's going to be bringing an order in soon. I don't know if you can see right there, a whole frame section. Yep. We have a woman named Marg that carves emu eggs into Whoa. all these really cool i thought it was metal when i saw it online once but those are fantastic in all these shadow boxes and she carves really neat pieces i have another woodworker um he is the finer detail he's the one that will lay the bowls they are it, his work is fantastic people order his bowls all the time because he gets just one piece of wood and it may have the split in it or a knot or something and he'll work around that to leave that character in the wood in itself it just they're fantastic um we're also also i have black pebble art and she takes the pebbles in the shadow boxes and they're all collected from our beaches locally and she has her two wee ones that go up with her and collect the rocks 
and she sorts them out and then she makes pictures like couples that are in love or walking down the beach That's and there's so little special. little driftwood pieces in there and people love those for wedding gifts for anniversaries just having the house to represent your family she's amazing with custom orders also we have a macrame person and her work is outstanding she has a feather that she her feathers a different design than anybody else's so she'll have entire swags that have feathers on them or just single feathers really talented uh of course my partner ruth ann she scrolls out wood signs so all of the wording she has scrolled out in detail and then glues it to wood to make these fantastic pieces uh what else we've got candles of course uh, Tracy is fantastic. She's bringing in another order tomorrow and she's got all new scents that are coming in and I love her work. Where am I going? We carry commercial. I make signs. I recycle furniture and wood and create all kinds of different pieces. We have a young lady named Ashlyn and she makes bracelets that take the uh, essential oils and she's only 10. Oh my word, that's amazing. Yeah, so we have somebody that her grandma is teaching her from what I can write, what I understand and I know about her. She's an amazing individual. This young lady has not only something to do and make a little money, but she donates it to the uh, St. Clair Child and Youth for everything that they do. And it had to do with the sting first for all the fundraising. She is learning how to be self-sufficient how to run a business, and how to be part of the community. So that's a win-win all the way around. Uh, another woodworker, little shed big ideas. And Chris is the rough farmhouse kind of style. His work is amazing. We have a woman that's from Vancouver, I believe Vancouver, and she does all of the acrylic paint pours. So the fluid art and her work. She came, she'd been here a million times but she wanted something to represent all the different areas. So she went to the reserve, she went to the different smaller lakes around in the area and everything looks like a satellite shot down at the river. So we even named, I got to stand there when she did one of the pours, it's massive. And we called it Canna Terror because to me, it looks like a satellite view of Canna Terror Park and then the cove off to the side. Who am I missing? I have Marnie, um, little M&M. Sometimes it's flagstone that she's recycled, but she gets all kinds of different um, tiles and she does acrylic pours and makes coasters and charcuterie boards. She recycles the handles and the wee knives to go with it. We have a young lady that makes cards, very wholesome, lovely, beautiful cards. Uh, we have a pottery person and her work is fantastic. Nancy McRae is brilliant. What else am I looking? Okay, so Re, we have a young lady that does all of our air plants. Her and her husband make ceramic pieces and then put the air plants in their ceramic pieces. Uh, she's done a little burn art for us also. Um, and then a photographer. Lisa is one of those people that can take a picture and what, we think it should look like normally, say the bridges. She takes pictures from a different angle that just makes you think about it all in a completely different point of view, right? We're always seeing the serene with the sunset on the water and there's the bridge, which isn't great. Everybody can take that photo. She'll go down there when the waves are crashing and it gives you that sense of it really is cold, hard metal. And here's this cold, frothy water that's hitting these rigid rocks all along the, like it really is something altogether different. Ah, stained glass. I have two stained glass artists in here. One that has a little more of a sense of humor. Um, he calls them beach chickens and makes these seagulls and driftwood. They're fantastic. People love them. And then we have um, someone, she, Kim's uh, accents in glass. She loves the more mosaic I couldn't even count. I know she's numbered them like up to a thousand pieces of glass in one piece, like just the focus on that, right? So there's that change. Again, if you want something that you're looking at $500, three to five, 
that's that work invested. Patrick has something, you know, that you want to look at it and go, <laughs> it's stained glass, but it's really, really cool and tiny and just, yeah. So I think I've covered almost everybody. That's amazing. I hate, to think, hate to think I'm missing somebody. Oh, and Patrick also, one of the stained glass artisans, his dad builds bird houses out of barn wood and then the tin roof. And Patrick makes little stained glass windows and doors to go on it. It's, nobody else does it. It's just the coolest thing ever. Um, gee, I hope I'm not missing anybody. Sorry if I did. I am just trying to go on the fly. And I put you right on the spot there. So I probably should have let you know <laughs> I was going to ask you that. <laughs> and then, of course, for our merchandise, because we have dog eat dog merch, we have fun mugs and we have the shirts and we're bringing in hats and then we'll have a men's line and the cards. We have all kinds of cool cards that I can't even say any of them on here, but they're fun. And we're trying to just make life fun in here. You're going to come in and see a piece that you love. There's a history and a story with it. You know where you've got it, the people that made it, you get to see their business. And you'll always remember that when you leave instead of getting home with a boxed up item. And when you open up parts are missing or don't call us if it's broken, call this 1-800 number and good luck. And that's, yeah, we just or can't we do give up before we start. Cause that's what I do. If I order stuff, I'm like, I hope I like it because I won't even go through that. I'll, I'll give it away. I'll end up throwing it out. I just, I, I feel like that's such a hopeless adventure and not worth my time. Unless it's something really pricey. I don't even bother because you're absolutely right. It's not worth it. <clears throat> so it sounds like moving forward, um, like everything in there sounds absolutely unique and personal. Like I, even as you're describing things, I'm thinking those could turn into family things that you're leaving for people. You know, they're just so personal and you can get attached and unique and special. And we have Mother's Day coming up, don't we? In like a yeah. hot minute, you know? And so this is the thing, you know, life goes on. We need, <clears throat> one of the things I'm really focused on is people's mental health right now. You know, yeah. I, um, I have a lot of interactions with a lot of people like you do. There's a lot of people that are really sad right now. And there's a lot of people that are really in fear right now. So, you know, going outside the box a little bit and getting them something to, to cheer them up. I mean, geez, I could, I could buy something and I could have you deliver it for me. Couldn't I? Absolutely. You know, so, so thinking of, you know, different ways that, that, um, uh, your products can be used to lift each other up to, you know, help support each other in, in this time where like, I'm starting to love this. I realize I've transitioned into a cat and it's wonderful. My schedule, I'm still working, but I'm working from home. So this is, you know, my 32nd trip to work now. Um, but I'm at the point where I'm embracing it. I'm, I'm really like liking this now and liking my, my new normal because I'm recreating myself though. And I'm finding my own purpose. You know, I'm doing these videos. I'm doing other things. I'm recreating myself now virtually exactly like you guys are recreating yourself to, to adapt to what's going on. So I, I totally salute you, Chrissy, and, and your team and everything that you guys are doing together. And I hope that other businesses, like even if you've, you've shut the door and you know you had to figure stuff out, there is not a week that I've seen gone by that somebody's reopened, whether it's, and it's usually food at this point, but like Cromwell Grill just reopened. Um, the Bad Dog was closed for a little while. <clears throat> Excuse me, I know Bottoms Up is thinking about doing takeout. So if you're a retail and, you know, so you batten the hatches and, you know, get your poop in a group or whatever, but now's the time to think about what's plan B. Hey, what can I do? And maybe other businesses who want to reach out to you, they can do that as well, right? And, and like what, <clears throat> pick your brain a little bit. I know you'd be open to that. So I think, um, you know, we as a community owe you a thank you for striving through and being the leader that you are and trying to help and encourage other people to, you know, to get together. And I know before this, you were really involved in trying to help boost Mitten Village, 
you know, so when we all come out of this, you know, we'll have so many things to celebrate and, and to get through this together to our new normal, because that's yep. ultimately what it's going to be, isn't it? We need to invest in every moment of our lives. I need to decide what's important to me. Things like you said, you're getting used to being in your nice because you have less going on up here. You have time to walk by and go, I didn't even realize that that was there. Like we were so full and so buried and not aware of what's important. And now that first week of I'm going to kill my husband, my kids are driving me nuts has led into parents. Yeah. Now you get to see a portion of what teachers go through every day. People that are staying home, you have no idea what it's like for retailers right now because yeah, we're a family at home too, but now we're putting ourselves at risk to come out just to make sure our income, because some of us, right, you can apply for emergency funding. Does it mean you're getting it? Some of us have to do this. And I think the shoe's on the other foot for everybody. You better roll it back and recognize what is really important. And when we get that and we act on it, everything, the chips will fall where they're supposed to fall. And, and everything will be great. And if we can just maintain that moving forward, stop worrying about your phone and selfies and trashing people on the internet and whatever. Have a little consideration. Restaurants that have opened, if you're a little bit pissy because you had food delivered and it was a little bit cold, guess what? You should have rolled on up and done a pickup yourself and then you could have got it home in time. Or just understand they're there being scared of how they're handling your food so that you don't get sick and you're safe and everybody's cool. Just understand that they're going out on a limb to make their survival work. I mean, they're not there just to make that extra five bucks and let's hand it out to twisted arm, right? Their neighbors got broken into and they ran a whole thing about giving donations and they raised a chunk of money to help this poor guy with his business. Like, that is the reaching out and they support everybody. The Kidney Foundation, I, there's a million of them. And I've been in their restaurant and had drinks and I've been a, a part of a million things there and their bands. And that's somebody to me that stands out in community. There are businesses all over town. Um, it, it, you just can't, people have been calling me for gift cards or sent, we have cards, we have all kinds of cards. And to, for the price of the card plus a dollar, I'm going to write a personal note in that card, put it in an envelope, address it, put a stamp on it, and you can send a card. So for $7, you can have a card sent to somebody to just say, guess what? I remember you're here. I love you. It's cool. We're going to get through it. And that, I mean, that's the best, right? I've had people that live right next to each other have a card mailed to their neighbor just because they want to stay safe, right? And that's that nice. Is so nice. awesome. I love that. The post office has to be getting tired of me because I've spent more time at the post office than I have in, I don't even, in a year. I've been there more often. And uh, we're having fun, right? Every time I'm doing something, it's like, you know what? Two months ago, you wouldn't have done that. And now you are. You're making the better choices. So there we go. That's what we're that's trying to do. That is so awesome. And I love it. And that card. Could have totally redirected somebody's life. That is that is so awesome. So the, the little the thing best one. I'm not even going to say the word, but the best one I love is, hey, let's make this year our the B word. <laughs> make this year your B. <laughs> That's the best because we didn't plan on it. We've been sitting on that card for a month and a half, but all of a sudden here we are. See, you just are you, you don't know you don't right? make light of it. That's yeah. That is so awesome. That's so awesome. So what are your hours now? So like can people, do you, you recommend they go through the website, right? For ordering stuff or calling Every, you? Yeah. If they want um, information, if they're inquiring about something, they can always PM us on our Facebook page or on Instagram. But our online store is tagged everywhere. And that has to be where the orders happening are happening because we're inundated. It was just like, bu -bu 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 -bu, and all these people started coming from every direction to try and place orders. And that first week was so overwhelming and we just had to clean it and just, this is the way it has to be. And once we got that straightened out, it was great. Easter was the test. Um, 
sure, we could have ordered chocolate and bought expensive stuff and sent out $45 baskets. And it just came to me that I hadn't even bought Easter chocolate for my family. I don't think anybody else thought about it. Nobody wants to go anywhere. So I said, let's just get chocolate, wrap it up, give them a pound and a half of chocolate. Their kids are going to miss Easter. 15 bucks. And we sold out five times and had to remake 40, 45, 50 of them at a time. It was unbelievable. And we, I mean, it wasn't, we're charging 15 bucks. It wasn't for a profit. It was so that these kids realize that life still goes on. It's not a big deal. And I mean, it's not all about chocolate on Easter, right? But for those that just, the weight of the world was on their shoulders and they weren't thinking about it. And we jumped ahead and thought about it. And I hope that everybody kind of went, you know what? And I've had two people roll up at the stoplight. I'm out with the dogs going potty and they're like, you know what? My kids love that chocolate that like we, our neighbor got it, dropped it off the front door. Um, Madhu Baker called and said, I want you to make me, I think it was a hundred, 100 of these. And she delivered them to her clients. Oh my gosh, that is so She went to all these homes and dropped, that had kids and dropped this chocolate off at everybody's door so that they would have, like, she didn't have to come through me. She could have gone to Amazon and gotten something really cheap, but right? She just said, you're doing this. I appreciate what you're doing. Line me up. And it was overwhelming, but it was amazing. Like, so awesome. Who so does that? Awesome. So that again is another person, Steph Purdy. She just opened Red and Co, right? They were just getting in their groove. And then this hit and she had just placed an order for Purdy's chocolate and it's a fundraising chocolate. So half of everything she sells gets donated to her choice of uh, whatever business I think she, she does a lot with the hockey league, the minor hockey league and point out where So she knew she was sitting on all this chocolate. We've known each other all our lives. And she was like, can you help me out? It's Easter. Who do you think? Can we work something here where the two of us, she's always hired me to do furniture for her and look after her. And she's been very good to me. And of course the answer was, yeah. So, I mean, she brought in chocolate and off it went, it took off. It's on our website. That's what we're here for. This is what the businesses are supposed to do. And when I say we can help, we can help. Or you can just sit there and think, I'm not asking somebody in the South End and Mitten Village to help me. Like, what could you possibly offer for me? You have no idea. That's right. Exactly. Exactly right. And, you know, I love that Easter thing because um, uh, I've been shocked over the years how much Easter has turned into Christmas. And I've been shocked over the years about, you know, the consumerism and whatever, you know, all that stuff. And so I think there's a great lesson here for kids who, instead of getting $300 worth of toys and stuff, would maybe really appreciate for the first time that, and they look great because I saw them, that you had them online. So maybe, you know, they'd appreciate that instead of getting used to all those big gifts. Like it was never like that when we were growing up right? It was a simpler time. So I totally love and appreciate the fact that we're going to start appreciating the things that we do have. You know, and it's funny what you're saying about, um, you know, the, the takeout and the delivery and, and not appreciating that stuff. I can't imagine being homeless right now, right? So oh. much to appreciate. So I think perspective is everything. So thank you so much for, because I know you have to you have orders to fill soon, don't you? Oh man, they're coming in every day. It's great. Great, that's awesome. Well, I thank you so much for taking time for me today. Um, and I hope we've got a good word out, you know, to the community and not just to Sarnia Lampton. I don't care where you live. You know, it's a great time to focus on each other. And if there's ever a time that we, you know, needed to learn the lesson that uh, keeping our sources close to us are important <clears throat> and sourcing things from, Canada or Ontario or Sarnia or your own town as much as, as possible. This is a reminder that, you know, stretching everything out worldwide is not always a good thing. I, I, I can't agree more. And yeah. I thank you very much for inviting me. I, you know, there's a million people you could have spoken to. So I appreciate you bringing me in. Well, you're very welcome. And you know what? It's funny because talking about relationships, why did I think of you first? 
because you're someone I know from the very first time we met at Coffee Culture, right? Mm -hmm. and, we, and we had our, our first little, for no reason only, except for to get to know somebody that's like-minded, you know? So um, if I didn't have those relationships, I couldn't have put this series together. So, you know, I, I'm very blessed as well to have all the people I know in the community. And hopefully, you know, it's like I always say, you put one little drop in the pond and the ripples go wide. So hopefully Absolutely. that's what we're doing with this. Yep. Awesome. So again, thank you so very much and have a fantastic day. And um, I'll be taking you when I'm sharing this video. Awesome. Thanks All so right. much. You're very welcome. Take care. Take care.